Hi, I'm Dave Golan for the Rutgers University's Entomology Department, and today I'm going to be going over an alternative pest control approach for bed bugs called Integrated Pest Management, or IPM. IPM is a method of control that is done in three stages, prevention, observation, and intervention, and combines a variety of practical techniques and products that pose the lowest risk to our health and to the environment. The first step to your IPM campaign is to make sure that you're dealing with bed bugs and not some other insect. Adult bed bugs are straw colored to reddish brown, have oval bodies, and are wingless insects. Their upper bodies are crinkly, like paper, and covered with short golden hairs. Before feeding, they're about the size of a pencil eraser and nearly as flat as a piece of paper. After feeding, they become bloated and dark red and have been described as animated blood drops. Their eggs, which are normally found in clusters, are white, shaped like a grain of rice, and about the size of a pinhead, with a lid at one end through which the young will emerge. Newly hatched bedbugs are nearly colorless, but otherwise resemble the adults, only smaller. Bedbugs can breed all year, and in the northeast of the United States, they typically have three to six generations per year. Now, their average lifespan can be anywhere from 10 months to a little over a year. And in that time, the female can lay up to 200 to 400 eggs, depending on the temperature and the amount of food available. Young bedbugs must take a blood meal before they can shed their skins and grow. They shed their skins five times before becoming adults. Bed bugs tend to bite all over the body, especially on those areas that are exposed while we sleep, such as the neck, the face, the arms, or the hands. People may sometimes not even notice that they've been bitten because they suffer no reaction to the bites, while other people suffer an allergic reaction to the saliva that's injected when the bed bug feeds. For this reason, people in the same household may have differing opinions as to how bad the bed bug infestation is, or whether it's even present at all. In the early stages of an infestation, bed bugs will be found around the cracks in the bed frame, and then gaps behind the baseboards, pictures, while later on they'll spread to seams and tufts of the mattress. Look for the insects, their cast skins, and eggs near crevices. Check pillowcases, sheets, and the mattress for bloodstains, smears, or flecks, which are the signs of their feeding. It's important to inspect the room thoroughly, moving in a logical pattern. Use a flashlight to look underneath and around furniture and woodwork. Inspect narrow spaces along seams, underneath cushions, and in between folds of cloth. Also, it's very important that you thoroughly inspect furniture, new or used, before bringing it into your home. Get rid of all the clutter. Remove things the insects could hide behind or underneath, such as pictures, posters, or area rugs. Vacuum, and if possible, use an industrial steamer on the furniture, concentrating on the seams, creases, folds, and around any tufts or buttons. Put the mattress and box spring in a bed encasement preventing bugs that are in the bed from escaping, and preventing other bugs from getting in. Hot launder your sheets frequently. The hot dryer temperatures will kill the bed bugs and any eggs that could be present in the linens. Seal cracks and crevices using tape or caulk, and lightly apply diatomaceous earth around the perimeters and entryways of your home. Also, you may want to contact your local cooperative extension office and ask them about insecticides that are registered for use against bedbugs in your state. You can monitor the status of your infestation by placing interceptor traps on the bed legs, sofa legs, and any other pieces of furniture with legs. Interceptor traps work by using you, the host, as a lure. The bugs crawl up the sides of the trap and fall into the well at the bottom. If you have bugs in the inner well area, chances are that they climb down from the bed. If you have them in the outer ring, the bugs were probably trying to climb up into the bed. Bed bugs are often found in places that experience a high volume of overnight guests, such as hotels, motels, 
hostels, or dormitories. They are also very common in residencies, especially in apartment communities, and because bedbugs go where people go, they can be transported from infested homes to schools, places of work, hospitals, or just about anywhere else. Now, it's important to remember that bedbugs feed during the night and then retreat to safety during the day. Now, a safe shelter for them could be your luggage or other personal things. So, when visiting one of these places, remember, check for signs of bedbugs, such as blood spots on the pillows or other linens. Also, inspect the seams of the bed and behind wall decor, such as pictures and especially the headboard. Now, if you don't see any signs of bed bugs, it's probably okay. But as an extra precaution, you can try pulling the bed away from the wall and picking up the covers and tucking them underneath the bed so that they don't hit the floor. First, identify the insect. Inspect the rooms thoroughly, focusing on the bedroom. Get rid of unnecessary clutter to eliminate their shelter. Steam and vacuum the furniture, concentrating on wherever your inspection reveals the presence of bedbugs. Encase your mattress and your box spring, and hot launder your sheets and linens. Monitor the status of your infestation by placing interceptor traps under the bed legs and any other piece of like furniture. Choose the removal methods that best fits your situation. If that includes a pesticide, make sure the product is labeled for bedbugs and follow all labeled directions. You may want to contact a licensed professional that is trained in the proper use of insecticides. So thanks for watching. This has been a Rutgers University production on the integrated pest management approach for bedbugs. And remember, it's always good to be prepared.